Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop, and today is Monday, August the 18th, and a reprieve in the weather conditions across the southeast, particularly in Georgia, South Carolina, uh, beginning this Monday, we're seeing drier air flowing into the region, except for a few showers still across southern Georgia. Uh, expect to see basically clear weather for the next couple of days, and you're particularly going to feel the uh, the difference at night with the lower humidity and the dew point values. Uh, we're going to see uh, the nighttime temperatures are going to feel much more pleasant than what they have been over the past several days and or nights. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic Ocean, there is Hurricane Aaron with still a very powerful uh, a storm with 140 mile per hour sustained winds. And the key about this hurricane is even though it's not going to be affecting the land as far as hurricane landfall is concerned, uh, but more so because of the size of this hurricane, it's going to be agitating the water. Think of like one of those uh, washing machines that uh, go up and down and agitate the water and generate waves and waves and waves that go out and out and out. And that's what this one is doing, this hurricane. And since it's so big and over, uh, well over 200 miles in diameter, uh, it's going to be generating very strong, a very strong swell, which is generating very strong breakers, large breakers, and dangerous rip currents all along the east coast of the United States for the next several days. That includes Georgia and South Carolina. So let's take a look at the, the map right now. And there's the path the hurricane has taken and the projected path it will be taking. And it will be uh, moving between the east coast of the United States uh, and between the uh, the islands of uh, Bermuda right over here. Uh, still a very large hurricane associated with the path of this storm. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. But the big problem for us, particularly in the east coast of the United States, will be the strong waves breaking across the uh, the coastline. Let's take a look at some of the advisories for our uh, the region. And a high surf advisory in effect and a, a rip current of, uh, warning is in effect for the uh, Georgia and South Carolina coast high surf advisory is in effect from 8 o'clock Tuesday morning to 8 o'clock Wednesday or Thursday evening. High rip current risk in effect from uh, Tuesday morning through Tuesday evening. Uh, expect high surf advisory, large breaking waves up to six feet expected across the surf zone uh, for the high rip current risk. Dangerous rip currents uh, are expected, and, and this will continue for well on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Further offshore, uh, east of the uh, coast of South Carolina, her, our tropical storm warning is in effect out there. Uh, they're expecting this, look at this, seas 32 to 47 feet on Wednesday, and uh, Wednesday night seas uh, will be uh, 31 to 46 feet with potential winds of 100 knots uh, flowing across that area as the hurricane passes by to the, uh, to the east of this tropical storm warning zone well offshore. But for the coastal areas, still a high surf advisory and uh, rip currents are in effect for the coast of South Carolina, southeastern South Carolina. And then looking at the North Carolina coast uh, advisory, in effect, high surf advisory, uh, high surf, a large breaking waves of 10 to 15 feet expected in the surf zone. Uh, for the coastal flood watch, significant oceanside inundation above ground level likely in low-lying areas near shorelines and tidal waterways. That's due to that, uh, that strong swell that's being generated by the uh, agitation of the strong winds and the large size of Hurricane Aaron. All right, let's take a look at the um, uh, conditions once again from the National Hurricane Center. And again, there's the path the Hurricane Center is expected it to take, and it most likely will, and uh, uh, going right between Bermuda and the east coast of the United States, getting fairly close to the outer banks of North Carolina. They're probably going to get the strongest effect of this storm. As I just mentioned there, 8 to 15 foot uh, uh, breakers hitting the beaches out there in southeastern North Carolina. All right, looking at that uh, uh, high risk current area, uh, the red is high risk and it comes as no surprise for Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday across just about the entire east coast of the United States from southeast Florida all the way up into Rhode Island. Uh, so this, you know, this storm has major impact as far as coastal 
waters are concerned with that agitation of the seas with the high surf, beach erosions, and uh, dangerous uh, rip currents. Uh, not advisable to go swimming at all along the area beaches across the east coast of the United States. All right, let's take a look at the uh, satellite review. And there's the storm this afternoon. And uh, it's quite well organized. And uh, uh, looking at this image I took earlier this morning, a uh, comparison of the visual view and the infrared view uh, showing the difference there. And you can see definitely the eye of the storm uh, and the air circulating around the eye of the storm, in the, particularly in the visible uh, view here. And in the uh, infrared view, you can still see very cold cloud top temperatures associated with the storm. The colder the cloud tops, the more severe the storm is. And uh, again, there you can see the eye of the storm and the air flowing and circulating in toward the eye of the storm. And above the storm, you can see the outflow, uh, particularly in the, the uh, visible satellite imagery, you can see the, the anticyclonic outflow uh, of the storm, which is ideal for the development of hurricanes um, in the Atlantic Ocean, well, in the Pacific Ocean, hurricane development overall, but particularly here in the Atlantic Ocean. All right, let's go into the um, uh, forecast models, and this is the GFS, and uh, there you can see, yeah, it's expected to move off to the uh, coast, uh, well east of the coast of the United States, and moving between Bermuda and the east coast, then out to sea. However, another system is trying to develop over in the uh, uh, Puerto Rico area, the Virgin Islands, and uh, over into there starts there and goes into the Hispaniola area of uh, uh, the Caribbean and then into the Bahamas and perhaps into uh, South Florida and then curving northward. Now, this is according to the GFS, and the GFS has been very biased in developing storms in this region over the past several months. So, you need to take this one with a grain of salt. Let's take a look at a more reliable model when it comes to tropical storms, and that'll be the ECMWF. Uh, let me go into that. Where is that? It's right over here. And we'll take on this one right here. And I might have to load in the the value, the, the images here. Let's see. No, they're loading. Okay. There you can see, again, no problem with the storm itself as far as tracking is concerned. It's a problem. It's a big storm. Look how big that storm is. Anyway, uh, that other storm that the GFS was picking up on, uh, the GFS uh, picked up on it. The ECMWF says, well, yeah, I see it, but uh, let's just keep it off to the east. And that's what it does. So once again, now looking back at the National Hurricane Center, there's that area of potential development over here, uh, area of concern. And uh, uh, this system has the potential of developing about a 60% probability through uh, the mid to late portion of this week. So we'll keep an eye on it. But right now, where it goes, it looks like it might be following the path of Hurricane Irwin. Uh, however, you know, it's not idea. It's not uh, set in stone where this thing is going to go. So, and again, we're getting into that time of the year where the tropics are very active. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. But right now, it's just keep your eyes on it and nothing really to uh, worry about at this moment. Uh, meanwhile, going back to my webpage, savannapat.name, and uh, uh, there the forecast looks very good for the next several days. Uh, yeah, it's in the 90s, but it's August and it should be in the 90s. But the humidity has not been quite as bad. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, rain chances over the next couple of days will be only at 20% at best, and, and some locations less than that. And the humidity values will be low. It's not much of a heat index, but by the end of the week, you guessed it, by the weekend, the rain chances go up to 60% prob probability Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right. Uh, again, I'm keeping an eye on that uh, development of the uh, source, the uh, the uh, rip currents and the high surf across the entire east coast of the United States, uh, keeping an eye on that. Swimming, just out of the question, no swimming in the uh, beaches for the next several days. Uh, even as strong, experienced swimmers, these rip currents will be very strong pulling outward. And uh, if you get caught in one of these, it's going to be very difficult to get out of it. And so, you know, the best thing is if you want to go down and watch the surf break, uh, it's going to be very visible and very visual at that. And, and uh, uh, but stay out of the water. That's the key. Stay out of the water because these are, are going to be very dangerous waters. And for all the shipping, 
uh, and fishing and, and shrimping and crabbing and so forth, um, the waters are going to be very agitated and very angry waters out there and very dangerous at that. All right. Thanks for all my new subscribers and new uh, um, uh, members of my page. I appreciate that. And, uh, uh, buy me a coffee. I have a couple of new people sent me some yummy fresh cups of coffee. I enjoyed that as well. And those who are on my Patreon page, I appreciate that as well. Okay, I'll keep you posted on this. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you later. Bye.